Hey y'all, just needed to pin that really quick. What's up? It's me, your girl Manza Moore, and I'm here ready to give y'all the video that I promised y'all, especially for those of you who have voted on my Instagram story. I want to say thank you so much, especially to those of you who've been, you know, just voting every single time I put up a poll because it's been easier for me to see what it is that you guys want to see from me on this profile. So I just wanted to get on really, really quick. I was actually hoping I could have had a full face on, but as y'all can see, I have moisturized hair and moisturized skin for y'all. So it is what it is. I just wanted to make do, uh, make good on my word and come on here at the time I promised y'all. So today I'm going to be basically just teaching you all, showing you all my own personal tips on how I basically stay optimistic during times that can become negative, um, during trials and tribulations, how to just fight off negative thoughts and negative uh, mindsets. So this is something that has taken me quite some time. Well, I would say over the years, I've gotten a lot better at um, if you're if this is your first time watching me, by the way, I want to thank you so much, whether you're watching this on the replay, uh, whether you end up watching this, because I might end up putting this on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure just yet, but we'll see if you end up watching on my YouTube channel as well. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure you subscribe at The Influence of Love is the name of my channel, The Influence of Love on there. OK, great. My second iPhone just turned on because I needed this <laughs> to read a couple things to y'all on there. So I'm grateful for that. All right, so, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're going to be talking about that gratefulness. So um, there are a couple of things I want to share with y'all, just really quick, easy tips. I'm going to try to go into depth, but not too much into depth about it. But for those of you who know, on this platform, I influence young women to uh, be unapologetic in their God-given purpose, to, co uh, to confidently master the mindset of being unapologetic in their God-given purpose. And so for me, when it comes to understanding who you are as an individual and understanding your purpose here on this earth, it's so important for you to understand uh, why you're here and what is supposed to be your responsibility what are you supposed to care about what is it that you need to let go of so that you can focus on the things that god wants you to be focused on and so right now you know we're living through a really interesting time i would say a time i don't think any of us have ever lived through living uh right now through this quarantine through the whole uh, situation that's going on with the COVID 19 right and to me honestly um at the start of it, I just kind of felt like it wasn't even something that I was really stressed out about. I really didn't feel super affected by it initially, just the fact that people would have to stay home or do social distancing. I'm naturally a homebody, so I just kind of felt like, okay, I'm just gonna have to stay home like I always do, you know, it's not a big deal. I think, however, um, this past week was a little bit more difficult for me just because of the fact that, yes, yeah, staying home all the time, even as a homebody, you know, I do go, I do do things, it's not normal. It's not normal to feel the the whole world on pause and being a prophetic voice and a person that I know the Lord communicates to um, or that you know the Lord has always talked to me uh, concerning the things that are important to him and, and the things he wants to communicate to his people I really feel that in this week he allowed me to feel how some people are feeling even if it were for this video or for anything that I create or that I do just to be able to get people to understand that even if you're a positive person and you begin to feel feelings of um, or you tend to be very optimistic for a lot of things or even if you begin to feel feelings of negativity that doesn't mean that you're a negative person or that you know you are now no longer optimistic there are times in life where we go through different things and that's okay it's okay to um, you know experience feelings because of the fact that yes a lot of people are right now going through things that is difficult are going through things that they've never had to face before and anytime there is a new normal that we have to take on and be open to it can be challenging and so it's okay if you've been having um, a challenging time with embracing the time that we're in we've never lived through a time like this and it's just so important that above all things you prioritize your mental health and so I wanted to share with you all something that God had brought me you know during this time I feel like a lot of people um, you know, are big on speaking prophetically on behalf of God. I don't have anything specific to say in regards to exactly why we're going through this time. But what I can say, something the Lord communicated to me and I felt may be helpful for some of you all is that this time is a time that God is using to realign our priorities in him. Um, and I really felt God explaining that to me and telling that to me um, just a, just about a week ago. And the more that I sit in his presence and the more that I'm in prayer, which is very vital for me at this time, I learn more and more that what God is really trying to show me and maybe even others is that he wants the number one spot in our life. And so sometimes we're so preoccupied with putting so many other things first in our lives, but God is not the number one thing that we put first. And so um, 
out of love, I feel that God has kind of put the world on pause for us to take a moment to just pause even in our own lives, which I feel that that has happened for a lot of people. A lot of people have taken a moment to kind of step back and recognize and realize what's important and what's necessary and what's needed in this moment and in this time. And so I want you all to really just think about these three things. Again, I'm not going to make this too long. I just want to go ahead and just give you all just three tips, three things that I use that really would help you through this time and through the things that you're going through. And the number one thing that always helps me through times where I can be susceptible to negative thoughts or I will have to fight off a negative mindset more often than not is gratefulness. Um, there is something about focusing on what is right in your life that will take you away from always meditating on what's wrong or what's out of your control. Many times what we think is wrong in our lives is many times things that we can't even control, things that sometimes we don't even have a say in. And then when you focus on what's right or what you can be grateful about or what's actually in your control, you can actually work towards that. And so gratefulness for me has been something that has really helped me because I remember being, when I was a lot younger, I would constantly be pessimistic about things or I would be negative and many times I felt that that was because of so many work curses that were put over me you're not you're never gonna be enough you're not important um, you know it's almost as if, if if people are constantly always telling you what you're not you can never see what you are and so I think that this time is also a really good time to take a moment and to really recognize who you are who does God say that you are because when you put the time and the energy and the effort into who you are as an individual um, you know like right now I know it's like a lot of people are doing things that are very um self-caring or things that you know maybe they wouldn't focus on as much about themselves it's amazing to see all the things that are no longer important that we used to prioritize and that used to before feel so important in our lives and so i find that to be something that is super uh, helpful when we stop and we meditate on what should I be grateful for because there's always something that you can be ungrateful for there's always something that you can be negative about and so this is why it's so important for you to meditate on those types of things and for you to only keep your mind on again what is in your control whatever is not in your control just give it to God it'll be so much more better for you to just you know take a moment and say okay Everything I can control can actually change my life, can actually make me grateful, can actually make me be positive during a time that I'm dealing with a lot of things or maybe there's things that have began to overwhelm me or I feel stressed out about. Lots of times we're stressed because our focus is in the wrong place. So when you shift your focus and when you understand that all it takes is that mind shift to be able to grasp what is important, grasp what it is that you should be uh, doing better, then you won't feel so overwhelmed with all these feelings of inadequacy all these feelings of what you're not so you really want to take that time to you know for me anytime that I've realized something in my life is a struggle I go to the root what is the root of the thing where did this start and so that's why I brought up the word curses because I noticed over time that the more that I became optimistic the less I looked like my past the less I looked like my upbringing the less that I looked like everyone else that I knew that was around me because I realized that I was outgrowing um, a mindset. I was outgrowing a way that had been kind of embedded to me to always expect the worst. What if something bad happens to you? What if, you know, and it's just, it's not normal, y'all. It's not normal. It can become our normal, but I think right now is a great time to really start accepting and really start embracing new normals into your life. Um, I want to say something, but I'm going to hold off to the end because, you know, I really just want to keep explaining some things to y'all here. So um, another thing that I wanted to explain really quickly, just to sum up this first tip, um, is that many times we imagine a lot of things that is never going to happen. Many times we imagine bad scenarios or we imagine bad things happening and it's not going to happen. So it's better for you to imagine good things happening in your life. Really, yes, things could go wrong any day of the year, any time of the day, like things are always subject to go wrong. That's a possibility. But you know, I'm a realist. So I'm real about stuff. And I'm really that type of person where I'm like, hey, sometimes you have a good day, sometimes you have a bad day. But I think it's important to always be the type of person it just it takes so much less out of you to be optimistic than it does to be negative being negative drains you as a person being the type of person where you have that mindset of just thinking everything like i've been around people that are so negative the more i've outgrown negativity and i get back around a person where negativity is just like their reality and their bubble it is so draining because it's just it's such a weight on your shoulders that you carry and that you feel um just weighed down by you feel weighed down by thinking all these negative thoughts and you don't have to just think of the fact that 
just like how do i say this okay so this came to me earlier today right earlier this year weren't there worries and things that you were so worried about you know that were gonna happen maybe even in this month or later in this year and then covid19 happened and then all those worries changed right people people got new worries you know and so it's funny we imagine bad things all the time but for some reason we don't take the time and the initiative to imagine good things happening or things that will actually help us in our life happening you know and so your mindset becomes your reality this is why it's so important to understand that if god has placed you here for a purpose he doesn't want you meditating on negative things he doesn't want you being afraid of a hundred thousand different things that may or may not happen thank you so much beauty for jack for writing and yes it's true isn't it like there's just so many things that we could just avoid if we just trusted in the fact that god has us and we don't have to be afraid um there are so many things that we'll stress our little lives out about that may not even happen so how silly is that how silly is it that you could have been worrying about something that wasn't going to happen or something you didn't want to deal with that was going to come up in this month and now you it didn't even happen so you were worrying taking away your peace and your joy when you could have been just been happy because you were thinking of something that God didn't even have in store for your life. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, y'all, just to sum that up, be grateful. Be grateful. Anytime you're grateful, it shifts your mind from all the things you don't have or all the things that haven't happened to all the things you do have. And there's always something to be grateful for. There's someone right now that's praying to have your life. There's somebody right now that would give anything up to be in the position and the predicament that you're in. So, and no matter how bad you have it, someone else always has it worse. And the way I see it is that, you know, this is something that I live by and I've always like, it's always been a reality for me is just, you know, the good times don't last forever, but the bad times don't either. So no matter how bad a time is, it really doesn't matter because it's not gonna last forever. So I wanted to bring you all, let me see if I can bring this up really quickly. Okay, so let me get into my second point, actually. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you all about is building up your faith. So, so many people don't understand how to build up their faith. They don't understand how to have faith for things. Faith is believing in what we cannot see, right? And so many times people will say, oh, I do trust in God and I know God's real and I know God has me, but they'll say it with doubt. You know, I get on I get on the phone sometimes with people and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I guess God has us. I guess God's going to see us through. I would hope. You know, but not not with that reassurance, not with that knowing. No, I know that we're going to be just fine. Because here's the thing about faith. You can't fake faith. You can't fake believing in God. You can't. And this is the thing about religiosity and just being religious. You know, just this idea of you believe in God, but you don't really prioritize him. You know, you don't really obey him and follow him in every area of your life. So here, here's, here it is. When you just insert God into the areas that you like and not in every area, there comes a place where you don't have faith. There comes a moment, there comes something because you're lacking faith in that area. And so when the real troubles come, when the real problems occur, if it's a little thing that you have faith for, great, right? The Bible says that you only have to have faith as small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed is probably the space between my thumb and my index here like some like a little pebble like that small a little seat right that's as much faith if you had this much faith you could move a mountain okay so people will have faith for certain things but not great faith for others and so when harder things come up in life this is in general y'all this is not just through what we're living through this is because trust me there will be other challenging times after this and this is why for me it has been I have, for the most part, experienced a lot of peace throughout this time because I've been through so much in my life. I've experienced so many things that, to be honest, it's just like, man, I, I've, I've been through worse stuff than this quarantine. Like, I, I have to be honest. And I don't say that to be insensitive to anyone who this is a really hard time for them. And I could understand because I've sat in so much gratefulness before the Lord and I thank God so much for all the time that I've invested into him and that he's invested into me so that my faith could be at a level where I'm not easily rocked by what we're seeing. And that's only because of the fact that God spared me and his grace and his mercy covered me so that I could live through a time like this and not be so strung out on high anxiety and high fear because a lot of people are experiencing that and that can be a really real thing. But when we understand that God has us and God has everything under control and yes, we're living through something we've never seen before, but this is no different than any other year. Every Every year something comes up that is hard or that's difficult now you might say wait a second how can you say that this is like this is different the whole world is on pause and it's like yeah that's true but there are many times in our lives where our world comes to a slow end where our life feels like it's on pause where our life feels like 
God, did you forget about me? What about all the things you promised me? What about, you know, we feel like God's putting us through a test and a trial and we don't understand why me, why us? What did, what did I do wrong? You know, um, I had goals, God, I had aspirations. I have things that I, that I, that I need for you to do for me in this year. And this is putting a hold on everything that I need to happen in my life. And so I would say for me that I, I haven't had a day where I've been scared of catching COVID-19. I haven't had one day that I've been scared of catching the coronavirus. I have to be honest. And that's not because of me. That's because of God. Um, I, I haven't had a moment where that's really sat in my heart. However, I have experienced feelings for other people because I know that when people get scared, people can do a lot of things that make no sense. You know, so there's always a concern for society and where society uh, how is society going to take, you know, a, a feeling of hopelessness or a feeling of not knowing that God is in control? So that always does concern me or has concerned me. And then recently this past week, um, I think that I was just getting to a place where honestly, I was feeling very overwhelmed because I was feeling as though like, wow, like this isn't easy, you know, and there's things that that yes, there's areas in my life in my husband's life. And I'm sure in the lives of many that, you know, you have your goals, you have your aspirations, you have your things that you want to just like, come on, God, I, I, you know, I know this is not going to last forever. But you know, can we get a break? You know, we're ready for breakthrough. We're ready for you to just kind of, you know, lift this quarantine so we could go back slowly now to a new normal, because I didn't want to say that too soon. Things are not going to return back to the way that they were entirely. Now, we will go back to getting out of our houses and, and being around people and being, you know, in public. But really, um, there's so many changes that have come to society that whether it be with businesses, whether it be with the way we interact with our families, with church, with so many different things. A lot of things are people are going to begin to look at things differently in the way that they used to, because this is what experiences give us. And so I wanted to bring you all this verse from the Bible, James 1, 2 through 4, that I think is always a great verse to read when you're going through times of trial and tribulation. Or even if you go through a day and you're just having a really hard day, and you just need to know that God is on your side and God's going to see you through. So let me read this to you all really quick. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the test of your faith produces perseverance. So let me just stop there really quickly. I find it really interesting here where it says, consider it pure joy whenever you face any type of trial. I'm sorry, whenever your faith is being tested and it's going to produce, hold on. Okay, let me say that one more time. I'm sorry, y'all. Again, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith is going to produce perseverance. Anytime our faith is tested, thank you so much, all. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Divine Denise. Um, I there anytime the Lord tests us in a certain area of our life, it's gonna make you stronger. You see how I say that I haven't been scared of so many things, or there's certain things that haven't really affected me. That's not something that I could have done all by myself. I was a person that I was scared of everything. I was a person that I was super negative in my life, you know. And I know some of you sometimes see me and you might think, like, wow, she seems like she knows who she is, she has it all together. That's the purpose that God has placed in my heart. That was a desire, something that God showed me that He had a purpose for me on this earth, you know, to uplift to help people, to show them what it means to know yourself, you know, and knowing yourself is knowing God. Until you know God, you really don't know yourself. But it's because of those things that th the test things that God has put me through in the last four years of knowing him, this month actually makes my anniversary month. I, I got saved in April of 2016. So it's four years. I feel like I'm um, in my fourth year, my graduation year with God, because there are a lot of things that indeed um, I have seen God move and change in my life. And so this is what I want you all to understand. The more that you trust God and the more that you get to know him, the, the less you are susceptible to the fears of this world. Because the number one thing that takes fear out of your life is fearing God. And so I, I feel that's one of the biggest things that I've learned in this time. Could it be that so many people are afraid of what's going to happen because they don't fear God? because you don't really believe in God. And fearing God doesn't mean that you are afraid that God's going to strike you down for, with a lightning strike or that God's after you. And it's not like that. What it means to fear God is to respect him and to obey his authority in your life. And so are you saying yours is in September? That's so great. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know. And, and just honestly, for me, it has been such a blessing to see God just do so many things in my life in so little time. And so today, as I sat in prayer, I really felt the Lord bring that back to me. Let me read y'all the last verse here, verse four in James uh, chapter one, 
verse 4 says, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so the spiritual maturity and the spiritual completion that God has placed in my life, that he can place in yours, or that he may have already placed in yours, if you can relate to what I'm saying, um, is because of him testing your faith. The trials and the tribulations come to test you so that the next time something comes up, you're not as easily moved and you're not as easily swayed. So when you think about this time, think about, Lord, how can you build up my faith in you so that, or, or what do I have to do? I will give y'all a couple of suggestions, some things that have worked for me. One of the biggest ways to build up your faith in God is to know what God says concerning your life. That is through reading the Bible. That is through listening to preachings. That is through seeking God in prayer, which is the next thing that I want to talk about here. But, you know, just getting to know God, whether it's reading a book about him, you know, picking up a book that says this is how you build up your faith. Um, there are so many things that, you know, people think it's just, oh, just go to church on Sunday. Right now, church is not open, okay? So this is a really good time, I think, for the church and for Christians as a whole to understand and recognize that it's not just about going to church. Although the church is an intricate part to the Christian walk and it is necessary and needed for guidance and for teaching us, um, we we are the church. So wherever, wherever we're at, we can have church. You can have church in your own house. It's any time that you spend with God. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. And so we have had such a limited perception of of who God is. And I posted that onto my story uh, from a prophet I love very much, Juanita Bynum, because she said that. She said, you know, God had her set up a stage. You guys can go on my profile and watch it. I, I love the video so much. And he told her, set the pulpit up as if you're in your living room, because there's going to come a day where people are, if you're looking for God only in a church, there's going to come a day where the church is going to be locked up. Okay. And you're not going to be able to get inside the church. If you think that church is inside your pastor or inside a leader or inside somebody that you idolize or worship on social media, you're going to kind of find out that you're going to go through a time where they're not going to have the answer for you. And so I can only speak for myself. There are a lot of people, a lot of ministries that I love and that I'm connected to, but some ministries I've had to put on mute for this season because they're just talking about COVID a little too much for me. And that's okay. If that's how they, you know, help people out, that's fine. But for me, I'm, I'm past that. I'm already looking towards the future for what's next you know I have been in prayer for those who have been suffering I have been in fasting I spent a whole week fasting on behalf of the entire nation you know what I'm saying cutting out disciplining my life doing what I have to do creating messages posting them onto my YouTube and I'm still doing those things and still doing you know helping people which is what I'm doing right now you know but there you have to understand that God doesn't want you stuck on what you can't control I can't control this this is a lot, you know, and we have to also be if, if you're a person and you're a content creator and you're watching me, you have to be careful with thinking with, with trying to burn yourself out, too, because I think it's great to obey God and to be doing as God will want you to do. But at the same time, you have to also take the time to step back and also be filled up with God again. You know, I pour out so much so often that yes, I have to step back sometimes and say, okay, now I need time for myself. Now I need time to replenish in God. And so all these things are just so, so important. And I pray that all these things help you all, you know, but the building of your faith is so important. So many people don't build their faith and just stay religious and just stay on God. Oh, you know, I believe in God, but you don't really know God. And when and when these times come, that's when you can really tell who knows God and who doesn't. I don't want to uh, go too long, y'all. Let me go into my third point here. Oh, I'm sorry, my second. Is this my second or my third? This is my third. Okay. So the third tip I have for you all, something that has helped me uh, keep a mind of optimism is prayer. During times where I've been through a lot of things, the one thing that carried me through was praying. Like, ooh, uh, 2018. That was one of the hardest years of my life. Um, you know, it was right before I got married and... I don't have a lot of good memories from that year. I don't have a lot of good memories from that year at all. Um, it's even hard for me to visit my hometown. Every time I go, it brings up a lot of bad memories for me. I'm not happy. Um, and it's just, I, I haven't fully, um, how do I say this? I haven't fully understood everything of why that happened when that happened in that year. However, from that year has birthed so many things into my life that have been so positive and so great for me. I got married and I, you know, I'm with the love of my life. I have grown tremendously spiritually. I have been able to understand what my purpose is even better. I have more identity in who I am. And so it's crazy how something 
how how indeed god can birth so many positive things out of such a negative time in your life but that's the very reason why we go through what we go through right god allows us to go through pain so that he can make our pain purposeful and we all have something we've been through and that's what god wants to use out of our lives you know and so that's the number one thing i recommend to any person is you, with something as simple as just praying every day with reaching to god and you know sometimes as people we don't really know what prayer is and i found that prayer is a lot of different things you know prayer for me is really time spent spent with God. Um, prayer for me is stopping everything and just putting my focus on my creator, on my father in heaven. So there's times where I could just be putting on worship and I'm just focusing on singing the lyrics and letting and meditating on what I'm saying and speaking that out because you have to understand that everything that you say has such power. Everything that you listen to has such power. When you get tapped into who you are as a spiritual being, as a person who God has created you to be, you start to understand better who you are, what you lack, what you need improvement in, what you possess, what you already have within you. And so for me, that has... I remember growing up, I didn't like listening to worship music at all, really. I really didn't listen to worship music. I grew up in a house where my mom only like basically played Spanish music. And I really didn't listen to a lot of Spanish music. I was into music in English. I liked anything that involved pop culture, hip hop, rap. That was it, like R&B. So when I got saved, um, you know, even though I remember liking like one or two gospel songs growing up, but I, I, I really hadn't listened to a lot of music that was just centered and focused on God. And the more that I did, the more that I saw, like, I would go into prayer, I would start singing a song, you know, that was just focusing on God, and I would feel touched, I would cry, I would feel release. If you ever feel like you have so many things built up, it's because you don't release those things. And having a time of worship and being prostrate before God helps you let go of all those negative things that you have built up in you. It just helps you to be just connected to Him. And God wants to speak to you every single day there's other days where I go into prayer and God has a strict assignment for me it's like you know I want to talk to you pertaining this message that you're gonna do so I let God speak to me or I speak to him and I tell God okay God how do you want me to do this message I'll have a notebook out and I'll start writing down whatever God brings me uh, whatever comes to my mind the more I've stopped to communicate with God the clearer his voice has become in my mind because I remember even when I first got saved I remember there were moments where I knew God was speaking to me and I knew, oh, that was God's voice, you know? And so there are so, like God speaks through so many different ways, but prayer for me has been the easiest way for me to understand him. And the more that I prayed, the more that I realized I had a burden for prayer. There were times where it was hard for me to pray because I would base prayer out of my feelings. Like, do I feel like praying today? Do I feel like God, do I feel God's presence right now instead of just understanding prayer was a discipline? Like you don't pray because you feel like it. You pray because you know God wants to talk to you. You know there's things you're going through and God wants to be there for you. And God wants to, God wants to wrap his arms around you. He wants to be able to communicate to you that he's there for you. And lots of times if we're so busy or, you know, we may be listening to preachings or we may be reading a book about him, but it's not the same like when we stop. And for me, like I, I just... I really just cut everything off. Like I just make sure that it's me and God and, and everything else is not important in that moment. It's just my focus is on God. Um, even more too, when I started speaking in tongues, for those of you who have the gift of speaking in tongues, I really recommend that you practice your tongues. Like if you have a very small baby tongue, practice it every single day. I remember when I could not speak in tongues and I really like... I tried one time, like I, I got prayed over to speak in tongues and it didn't happen. And it wasn't until I got saved, I got baptized. And then I got and uh, right after that, like I just started speaking in tongues. Someone prayed over me to receive uh, to receive it. And I remember the lady in the room was like, it starts off like a baby tongue. Like it starts off really, ah, re, sha. it starts really like just small. And she was like, all you got to do is just practice it every single day when you're in your car, when you're on your job, when you, and I just started practicing and practicing it. The more that I started practicing my tongues, the more I could hear God, the more like, even sometimes there's things that I read, I could be on social media and it could be something that's a revelation from God. And my tongues will like, oh, re it'll just come out because there is so much revelation and there is so much communication that God has with us with our, as you all know, when you speak in tongues, it's your heavenly language. And so many times people don't understand the function of speaking in tongues. They think it's just like, oh, you're, you know, you're speaking out loud, a whole bunch of gibberish. But honestly, for me, it has been a 
blessing i have loved speaking in tongues like it's my favorite thing in the whole it's one of my favorite spiritual gifts it really is and the more that i've practiced it the more i've been able to hear everything that god says concerning my life i've been able to be more connected i've been able to really decipher and discern where i'm at in god so i want to go ahead and um what was this other thing here i wanted to tell y'all about let me see oh i thought this thing was charging y'all give me a second oh no it died oh well so let me just give y'all this homework then because i thought this thing was charging and it's not i don't know why okay that won't be a mess uh galatians 6 9 is a verse that says do not be weary uh, weary and well doing for in due time you shall reap a harvest right i wanted to give y'all that verse because um you know when you're in prayer and when you're waiting on god for certain things now my phone is turning back on it's holding crazy uh when you're waiting on god for certain things it could be it could be really hard to just put your patience in God. And as people, we always want to know what's next, you know? And for me, that's why I love being in prayer because it, it helps me produce per, uh, perseverance and patience in my life. Like I'm able to, as a person, uh, be able to articulate and communicate my thoughts better. Like even doing videos like this, like I sat in prayer longer just to be able to hop on this video and give y'all whatever I felt God wanted me to communicate to y'all. Everything that I do has nothing to do with me. It's it's not even about me. If it were for me, I wouldn't even be on social media. I wouldn't be doing this video. I, I would have made everything about me a long time ago. Like it's not even a joke. It sounds really sad out loud, but it's the truth. God is my witness. And so I'm, you know, I'm the type of person where I'm straight up, I'm real um you know i'm a nice person but you know i'm human and us as people there's times where we just put the focus just on us and we forget like listen god has a larger plan for our lives we think too small as individuals and today while i was in prayer i felt such a release from god because you know many times we go through things and we feel like we've lost time we've lost time we didn't get to accomplish the things that we wanted to or people were just really hard on us people never really told us or never really recognize in us the things that we have gotten better at or the things that we're flourishing in and so we tend to not extend that mercy and that grace to us but our, to ourselves but i want you all to know for those of you who have felt that during this time it's just been hard because you feel like you wish that there were things you did before the quarantine or you wish there were things even in your life maybe it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on right now but just in general you feel like maybe you you like just I don't know, wasted so much time in the last decade. And you feel like you sh you're supposed to be somewhere, you're supposed to be a certain type of person, you're supposed to have certain things you don't have right now or you haven't been able to accomplish. I want you to know that God restores the years unto us that we have lost. Um, you know, this was something that God really put in my spirit very early on when I first got saved back in 2016. And I forgot that. And today in prayer, the Lord really brought that to me in a beautiful way. I sat in prayer probably for like almost two hours. And the crazy thing was that I had to get off because I was like, I have to do this video. So I'm running out of time. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fix my hair, do whatever, because I sat in prayer. There's just a very sweet thing about sitting in prayer and you getting the answers to the things that you need help in. And this is why I'm a big advocate for prayer. Prayer is going to to change you as a person when you sit before God there is no way to sit before God and be bitter and have a hardened heart your heart gets softened and so if there are things in you that you feel like man I'm trying to get together I'm trying to be a better person I'm trying to be more optimistic I'm trying to not be a negative person I'm trying to see I'm trying to make sure my thoughts and my mindset is focused on the things that I know God wants me to be focused on you need to pray over your mind Listen, your mind is the biggest battlefield because the enemy knows your mind better than you do. And there are patterns and things in your mind. If you have not, if you don't have any type of emotional intelligence, if you have not studied anything about psychology or picked up a book to, to just get to know why you think the thoughts that you think, you have no idea how at a disadvantage that you are. And so you have to begin to to understand that just the quality of your thoughts alone determines the quality of life that you live. Focus on the things, again, that you can control and not the things that you can't. And so whatever you don't know, it is your responsibility to find out and to fix and to do better in your life. You understand? So I want to go ahead, now that I feel like I have more or less summed that up, y'all. Um, I want to go ahead and talk about number four. Super, super important. This is my last point here. And I'm going to try not to drive this one all the Not to go so long on this one because I'm going to drive this one all the way home. This is my favorite point, okay? Because I'm a big, big advocate for this one. This is about blocking out all things negative. You have to 
this is my biggest tip. This is the number one thing that I've learned in life. You have to block out all things negative in order to be optimistic, in order to be able to live a life that is not surrounded around negativity. So yes, this means thoughts, this means conversations, and yes, this means people, okay? There are a lot of things that we allow in our lives or we um, okay or we don't check or we just... We're not honest with ourselves about, okay? There, anytime there's negativity in your life, it is coming from something or from somewhere. Hey, how you doing? I want y'all to be able to understand that negativity is something that only you can allow in your life. Now, this reminds me of a video I did not too long ago. Y'all could check it out on my YouTube. I actually filmed it on here on IG Live, but y'all know the IG Lives don't last forever. Um, and it was about uh, drama is a destiny destroyer. And for those of you who know that you have a calling and a purpose on your life and you know there's something important you're supposed to do, maybe you don't even know what it is. I recommend you get into prayer with God. I get to, I recommend to you get to know God better so that way you can get to know why you're here and what you're meant to do. Um, but I, I really want to encourage you all to understand, right, that negativity is much like drama, right? It's a distraction. And I really covered that on that video. I'm going to just lightly, a little bit cover this on here. Any time that you have negativity in your life, you know, it, it's something that manifests in every area, okay? For as much as you want to be positive, for as much as you want to be optimistic, for as much as you want to see the thing through, if you have negative people around you, if you spend all day thinking about negative things and negative stuff and negative this and that, you have to block it out. You have to say no. When a negative thought comes into your mind, you have to say, I'm not entertaining that. Not going to dwell on that. Not gonna, you have to shift your mindset. You have to either turn something on and here's the thing we'll do it for one day we'll do it for one moment but then we don't keep doing it you have to understand your mind if your mind has a pattern if your mind has a habit okay habits don't break easily right they're there for a reason it's because you've built it over time so this is something that i always you know bring myself back to right since the time I got in with God, there's a lot of things I've been able to get together in my life, right? So anytime there's something in my life that I realize, yo, this is still a problem that I have and I have to fix this, I have to also be forgiving to myself and say, well, you've been doing this for longer than you've known God. So if I had, let's say, for instance, an issue with, I don't know, prayer. Prayer was something that I used to be really bad at. I couldn't pray for probably longer than like 15, 20 minutes, you know, and I really wanted to be the kind of person where I could just sit and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and feel released from God and hear what God's saying to me and be able to prophetically pick up what, you know, what is God wanting to communicate to me today, right? That was something that even last year, God, I had to sit with God and he brought me the reason, the root of why I had that problem, okay? And it came from a relationship in my life that I felt like I was never heard and I was never made to feel, um... I wouldn't say not just important, although that is a, although that is true too, but I was never told that how I felt was validated, okay? So I felt almost as if because I didn't have that from that person, then that meant that why would God care about talking to me or about what's important in my life? Why, you know, and it took till last year for me to get that breakthrough. So then after that, I was able to sit and pray. I could sit and pray and maybe... If I wanted to, I could sit and pray for four hours if I wanted to. Like I could I could pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and it would not stop. Okay. And it, it would be great. I'll be happy. I love praying. Listen, I think I've I think I've summed that. But what I want y'all to understand is that all these things that you have in your life are the sum total of of it originated somewhere. If you're starting to realize, yo, I'm a negative person. I'm negative. Like, I remember the moment I realized I was negative. Like, I remember it like yesterday. This was like back in 2013, 2012, around there. I want to say 2013 was really when it started hitting me. And I realized the reason why I was so negative was because I was around so many negative people. Like, everything I knew was just negative. It was just negative. My life was negative. My thoughts were negative. And I started understanding. I remember I saw this post once and it said, you know, every morning you wake up and you get to choose your thoughts the same way you choose your clothes. You know, it was like a picture of like this really beautiful closet. And it's like every day you get to choose, right? What shirt you're going to put on, what pants you're going to put on, what shoes you're going to put on. Your thoughts are the same way. Some people say, well, I just can't help it. It's just the way I am. No, you can help it. It's the way you've chosen to be. Whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. 
okay so this is why i have a zero tolerance for negativity i don't i don't create friendships with negative people i don't entertain negative conversations i don't pick up the phone for a lot of different things because of the fact that i understand that i am carrying something in me that is so important that if i let certain things come into my life it's going to disrupt what god is creating in me it's going to disrupt the beauty and the um direction and how do I say this? The anointing that God wants to flow through in my life. And so you have to understand that sometimes, you know, us as people, we nice and we don't want to offend anybody and we don't want to hurt nobody's feeling and we want to be there for people. But you have to let people learn how to also be there for themselves. You cannot fix other people's lives. You cannot be God in other people's lives. And so the problem, the reason why we have a lot of negativity sometimes in our lives is because you either have somebody in your life that wants to be an idol. They they want you to look at them as God. They want you to always please them, do for them. And here's something I've realized about relationships when they're toxic, when they're narcissistic, when they're not for you. People don't ever care about what you're going through. But when they're going through something, they don't they just want you to drop everything and be there for them. OK, so I want you all to have the nerve, the guts to stick up for yourself and say, you know what? I can't recall the last time you were there for me when I was going through something, but I'll tell y'all this. This is what I do with situations, relationships, things in my life that I'm like, you know what? This person, God, God has put this person in my life. I don't know why this person is here. I don't know why I'm connected to this person. I don't know why this person was a part of my past. I, you know, I don't know. But if God puts a burden on me for something, I'm going to pray for them. I pray for everybody, whether they wish me well, whether they don't like me, I don't care. If I, if I feel God leading me to pray for a person, if I feel the enemy attacking me constantly about thoughts or things. The other night I had a dream and it was just a really negative dream. And I'm like, where'd this come from? Because I didn't go to bed thinking about that. So this is the importance of understanding how you can combat negative things like it really starts from a place of prayer it really starts from a place of acknowledging it you know where is the origin of this thing why is it here why is it happening so many people don't know how to block out the negative because you feel that the negative is supposed to be some type of priority in your life it's not god is the priority when you understand that god is number one in your life everything else is easier you understand what not to prioritize. You understand what to be like, hey, I'm, you know, you don't even have to say sorry for it. I'm not even going to tell y'all say sorry. You know, this page is really, really why I created it. I want y'all to be unapologetic about certain things. And when you have a purpose and a calling and you have and God has started to show you, I need you to get this together in this area. You can't tell people sorry when when you can't come through for them. It's like, look, I just can't come. You know, sometimes because here's the thing. Here's the thing about saying sorry. I'm off. I'm off for apologizing when necessary, but there are certain times where we're made to feel guilty about things that's just not our responsibility. And God will show you what and who is your assignment. What should you be preoccupied with? What sh God does give us certain burdens. He gives us certain convictions and certain things He wants us to focus our time and our energy into. And then there's just other things that are just not. It's just not. It's not. It's not a priority. It's not something he has assigned to your life. So you could be free, free to let it go, free to not feel bad about it, free to just say, you know what? That's not my priority. And because, because here's the thing I recognize about people. Let me tell you something about people, right? People will make things seem like it's your part and your responsibility that are not because they're not prioritizing it and they're not being responsible for it. OK, so then they'll use others as a way to combat or as a way to feel better about themselves because they haven't taken the time, my God, to fix those areas within themselves. That's where codependency comes in. That's where toxic relationships comes in. That, that's where all these things derive from. Because anytime we're in a negative mind, like a, just a negative way of thinking, y'all, anytime we let our mind sit there, we feel validated. We feel right to, to think this way. We feel as though um, negativity almost gives us like, how do I say this? The word is leaving me. It makes us feel um, like we have every right to be negative. Like we have every right to be negative. That's what negativity gives you. It gives you the, the, the nerve to think that I, I, I could be negative because my life sucks or this, that, whatever. You don't want to be that kind of person. That's a really sad existence. And let me tell y'all something. The more that you become optimistic, I'm going to end here, y'all. The more you recognize and realize really quickly 
uh, what you have in your life that's negative. The more you start to strive, the more you start to change the thoughts that are in your head and you start to see your life from a perspective and through a lens you never had before because that's what begins to happen. It's like the doors in your life begin to open up. You start to see things in a way you've never seen it before. Like, wow, I used to see everything in a bad way and now, now I see, I used to see everything that I'm not, now I see everything that I am, you know? And this really, this perspective comes from God. Many times we don't have it in ourselves. We don't have a place to reach for, to go for. It wasn't there to begin with, okay? But I want you to know that God is a restorer. God is a healer. And I think more than anything else, people are scared about this or scared about that. Don't be scared. Ask God to heal your mind. Because when you have a healed mind, you can overcome anything. That means sickness, disease, bad times, uh, you know, bad situations, bad relationships. You could overcome anything anything when God heals your mind my mind was so destroyed by the end of 2018 I see the miracle the Lord told me this time last year for Easter I sat in church and the Lord told me your life is a miracle and I don't think I fully understood it even then and as I went out throughout my year in 2019 and I and I began to understand man Jesus Christ my God said I and I began to tell every single testimony about things I went through in my life that those testimonies began to heal areas of my life I didn't even know were suffering to the capacity that I thought it was, you know, because sometimes we get through things and we're like, okay, I survived it. So, but we don't understand that healing the wound sometimes is more difficult than actually going through the trial and the tribulation. So this is why you need to, you need to take on the mindset now because you don't want to get to later and you're still dwelling on right now once this is all over. You know, you have to forgive yourself and you have to see yourself through the eyes of God and through the eyes of heaven to heaven. You are important. God has things that he has lined up for your life. Don't let what you're going through right now or what hasn't happened or what you feel like you could if you could just turn back the hands of time and just change. Don't live your life in regret because that's not what God wants for you. That's not the reality that he has for your life. He wants you to trust in him. Trust that he has not made a mistake concerning your life. Not a single mistake. Your life is not happening by coincidence or chance. It is your fate. It is what God has called you to. And God could restore the years, the time, whatever time you felt you missed out on, whatever you felt like didn't work out for you in this year or hasn't been working out for just as of late. God could turn a thing around in very little time. I'll never forget because I used to stay singing it. Um, what's this song by? Dang, I just forgot. Um... Jesus, uh, blessed by Fred Hammond, or we're, it's either we're blessed or blessed. I think it's blessed. I used to sing that song all the time. I love that gospel song so much. And he, there's a lyric that I really love. And I used to feel such a release every time I heard it. And he said, you know, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. And I felt the Lord bring that to me even at either it was at the end of last month, or the beginning of this month, that there are some things that some of you are so worried about, but because the favor of God rests on your life, you don't have to be worried about it. God's going to work it out. Something that should have took you five years is going to take you five months. Something that should have took you, my God, she something that should have took you three years is going to take you three days listen when you understand who you are in god you don't fear the same things you used to fear and so that's the number one thing i want to leave with y'all here that mindset optimism all these tips i gave y'all there is no way i could have gave this to y'all without god it's god it's god who gives us the mindset the power the ability to overcome all and when you build that resiliency right here in your mind hear me you're unstoppable you're unstoppable there is no force listen in hell that can stop it nothing can stop it when god says i am going to make this a possibility i'm gonna make this a reality in your life no man no man no person nothing can separate you from god from his love and from his protection nothing can stand against all right. So that's my video, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I don't do lives often, but I saw a lot of you get on and I'm really grateful for that. Um, maybe in the future we'll do another one. I'm not going to make any promises. You know, I really go off of whatever the Lord leads me into. If you're not already following me on my business page at the Amanda Moore, I forgot to mention that at the beginning, please make sure you follow me. Um, I have a lot of things over there that I share. Also, if you're a girl and you love beautiful accessories, I would love for you to shop my website, amandamore.com. Check it out. 
um also if you love makeup beauty hair all that kind of great stuff i have all that on there if you're watching this through youtube or if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel make sure you subscribe i have a lot of great videos on there if this really empowered you i, I have a whole bunch of content that's just like this if not even better so check out my channel and make sure you subscribe i have a goal to get to a thousand subscribers in this year so i really appreciate any help i can get towards that i've had a lot of people subscribing as of late so uh make sure you follow me on there or subscribe to me on there at the influence of love okay so thank Thank you everybody i appreciate everyone for getting on and i'll be saving this video so if you did not catch it or if you missed any part you can go back and watch it. it'll be up for the next 24 hours all right y'all check y'all on the next one